Hello guys, welcome back, Airsick Hydra here, and in today's video we're going to be going through the weapon system with Inquisitor Martyr and looking at how to evaluate how good your weapon is, how good its damage is going to be, and if it's the right tool for the damn job. So without any further ado, let's have a look at some weapons we've got gathered here. Here's a few I made earlier, and let's get to work comparing some of these and understanding what they actually are. So let's bring up a weapon here. First up, first thing you'll notice in the weapon screen is you have a fist here this is the attack rating now this doesn't directly influence the damage of the item however it does influence the damage of the character we'll come back to that in a moment but what this is for is this is for a contributing towards your overall attack power which when reaching certain milestones will progress you in attack power level now the whole reason for this system, you'll notice the planets each have a number. If you are level 1 and you are going on a level 2 mission, you deal less damage, much like if the enemy was given a bonus of armour. If you are going against a level 3 mission, as a level 1, again you will deal slightly less and they will deal more damage to you. It's almost a form of difficulty modifier like something like Diablo 3. Now, I'm currently power level 4 on this character, and I deal 50% more damage in a level 1 mission than I do in a level 4. So there is a fairly substantial difference, although I don't have access to the exact figures as to how much more damage or less damage you do. So, first up, this stat on an item, the attack rating. No, it doesn't govern the damage. However, if you progress in your power level, then that will allow you to do more damage to the same unit. So it does get a little bit confusing. Let's move on. Overall damage now. Nice and straightforward damage and ammo, sometimes modified by certain skills, the ammo count, but generally it's the same for all weapons. I think you'll find all of these are going to be 40. But the damage does vary a fair bit. However, the damage is only a something to take a glimpse at. It, it is useful to see... However, I will have items here that have 108 damage that deal less overall damage than some of the others. So let's try and explain that now. If we go down to the modifying abilities here, you have to factor them into the overall damage that your character is going to do. Because you have to remember that this damage up here, this 108, is going to be modified by other things like your total range damage, your crit chance, etc., and that's all going to contribute to how much overall damage output you have. On that note, a quick way of reflecting on this is offence. Really, in a typical ARPG, this would be called DPS. Apparently, in Van Helsing, it used to be called DPS, which stands for damage per second, if anyone's familiar with this. However, the Van Helsing crowd apparently didn't like it very much, so they changed it to offence. Personally, I feel that attack rating and offence is far too similar. It doesn't really differentiate between the two as to what they are. They both apply that you're going to be doing more damage, whereas really attack rating doesn't give your character any direct stat bonuses. So it's a bit confusing. But let's now return back to evaluating which weapon is going to be better. Yes, you can look at the offence rating, that's absolutely fine. The offence rating will factor in things like plus range damage on the item. So you'll notice this one has plus 4% range damage. So even though this is 108, plus 4% onto that, it may end up doing more damage than another item that's, say, 110. So you do have to factor these things out, and the offence can be useful at a glance to see what is better. However... With weapons that have cooldowns, this works quite well. It works neatly and it sort of makes sense because you'll be using every ability when they're off of cooldown and spamming them along. Something like the Exodus rifle, this can work fairly well with. But what you have to take into account is you take an ammo-based a ammo-based gun rather like the auto pistol, and what you'll find is you can actually use a lot of these moves indefinitely. So Let's say, for example, that I had specced entirely into a stun and shock plus damage modifying and salvo based build using all of the skills available to me and all the skill points I have. That would mean I would do a great deal more damage to enemies with this attack. It may be upwards of sort of 30-40% with some of these abilities, so straight away 
even though you might realise this one over here has 238 damage per second, this one has 216 damage per second, this one once modified may end up being even greater. So here what it's worth doing is taking this weapon, seeing how it actually is on the character, so now I've equipped it, it will actually modify it with all of these skills and other such things I have, and now you get an actual impression as to if it's any better. You see it's 316 with this now, so even though that this very same weapon, if we swap it back over, off of my character, 216. So you see when you equip things, it does change the actual weapon's modifier, so just comparing them on paper isn't actually sufficient because it doesn't take into account your character. You'll notice all of these have a fairly static 210 to 216 ish damage for this one ability. As soon as I put it on my character, it will be amplified a little bit more in accordance with the skills I have. I know I've explained this about three times now, I think, but it's something really important to actually get to hang off, get the hang of rather. So yes, it's true. You can just look at the offense rating, but you have to consider your build. The offense rating will be based on a combination of all four abilities, whereas you may just be looking to use one particular ability. This is a little bit confusing and it is a little bit more time consuming, but equipping every single one of them and seeing how that ability does in terms of damage per second will allow you to see which item is going to serve you best. And you may even find in some circumstances, sacrificing a little bit of attack rating may still give you a increase in terms of your total damage at that time. If you're not about to go up a power level anytime soon, stick some items in the bank and feel free to just use the ones that do the most damage. There's no advantage of being nine-tenths of the way to power level five compared to one-tenth of the direction to level five. Until you hit five, you might as well be using the weapon that actually deals the greatest amount of damage. So don't necessarily focus on stacking all that attack rating. Keep the items by all means. But there's really no need to equip plus attack rating items just because it gets you that little bit further along the bar. Guys, hopefully that's given you something to think about. Hopefully that you find that useful in terms of understanding how to select weapons and how to choose the right tool for the job. Have a great weekend. Looking forward to some more streaming from the developers next week. Coming up on Thursday, do not forget 7 p.m. Excuse me. C-E-S-T. They forgot the goddamn S. Guys, take care. See you then.